Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new frame from Real ACC and it's called the Ultra 215. Now this is a 215 millimeter wheelbase quadcopter, which means it's a five inch quadcopter. It is a true X and every single plate on this quadcopter is two millimeters other than the arms, which are four millimeters. Now it is a lowrider type style and it is a top mount battery frame. So uh, let's talk about some of the clearances. Now the clearance inside in the middle where you would stack up your flight controller, VTX, receiver, whatever, is going to be 19.5 millimeters. So it's a very, very small tight space. Maybe you'll be able to fit a nice little two stack in there, but replacing the nylon standoffs that it originally comes with. All right. So now let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and remove this levitating thingy. And if you were curious about that, I made a video separate just for that levitating thing if you really wanted to see it. All right, so like I mentioned, we have 19.5 millimeters of space within here. So it's a very tight squeeze in there. But we do have some room back here and we do have some room in the front. Now, the, f the type of camera it will take is a, just a normal HS1177 type camera. However, as you can see here, they have made a little opening down here so the camera can actually go through. So you could have your nice little angle tilts here. Now, another thing what I noticed is what I kind of like really did not like, but it's not a deal breaker it's the fact that the arms are basically held with these nuts and these are the uh, nylon nuts not the not the nylon nuts the um, self-locking nuts I would say but not the ones that are actually the engrave into the frame and hold very well so the there's two screws holding each arm and only you only have one nut to hold it basically firmly into place which are these outer nuts here now if we take a look here the inner part, the inner screws are being held with the nylon standoffs, which is acting as, as a nut in sort of way, you might say. So this, you know, for me personally, if, if I'm going to build this, I would actually remove the nylon uh, standoff there and put a tiny small nut below the nylon standoff just to make sure I have good you know, rigidity and it's not going to come loose anytime lo soon and it's not going to create me some oscillations. Now, there's also another thing to take note of here. The hardware was all there very nice but i strongly highly recommend you get some proper hardware for the uh screws that are going to be holding the arms in place because they will strip they're not very good quality and uh just take that into consideration if you felt it stripped just once i highly recommend you remove it right away and just toss it in the trash never leave any screws that are uh stripped because it's 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 a nightmare it could ruin a whole frame so take that into consideration when 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 getting this. A lot of really AC's hardware is, is not very good, especially like the Martian, all those. These things always happen with me. So you're not going to be able to really tighten this down with the hardware they currently provide you with. So that's something that's very important. I believe you should really consider and take note of because that 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 could create nightmares for you. So let's take a look here. Now they do give us, you know, a lot of mounting solutions. We, as you can see, we have our battery uh, strap holes right here ready for us. So that's nice. So also take note of something. When you're building this, try not to go too high. So your battery strap also has space inside. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, hit or just, you know, pop off components. Because sometimes that will happen and that does happen. If while you're putting the battery strap or moving it in there, the rough side will just go in and probably just snap a capacitor off the uh, flight controller or something. So take that into consideration. We do have a hole for our SMA antenna. I really like this. It's pretty far out. So like a 1500 milliamp battery would probably fit here. And you know, the GoPro is going to be a little pushing it, but I think you can get it to fit. I wish this was back a little bit more, but you know, what can we do? And there's a lot of mounting holes to mount your VTX. If you have one of those uh, just normal ones that are not stackable, you could just go ahead and mount it back here. Now let's take a look at the GoPro session mounts if they do provide us with anything and they kind of do as you could tell right there they give us two little slits you could put zip ties through or something i don't you're not gonna be fitting a battery strap through there anytime soon but that's a huge plus i really like this because i could just go ahead and put one zip tie here another zip tie to come from here up and it'll just hold it into place absolutely perfect so that's good i really like that um 
and what else do we have here yeah something also that's very important the camera side plates this is what i was talking about before i don't know if you've been watching my, my channel lately these camera side plates are two millimeters that means the stock screws that come with your camera depending on your camera if you're getting like a generic run cam swift or a foxier xat 600 or the chinese clone the screw will not go through all the way so it will not hold the camera so you have to take that into consideration also when you purchase this that you get longer screws for your camera and get the correct screws for your camera that is very important because you could ruin the whole camera's outer housing if you go ahead and strip it all right so that part is basically done here uh, what else do we have overall it seems pretty rigid however like i mentioned i couldn't really tighten it down too much the carbon is very nice it's 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 well cut i can tell you that i didn't see any defects everything aligned super perfect which is a huge plus also like really perfect from the camera plates to the arms to the holes everything aligned perfect i didn't have to fight anything or like you know pre-screw it into the carbon to get the screw to go in i didn't have to do any of that uh the arms kind of do interlock well they don't interlock they just uh it's it's precisely cut where they do actually align very nice in the middle so as you can tell right there maybe you could see that i don't know if you could see that or not you also have this little bottom plate here to add some extra rigidity, I guess. But um, overall, you know, it looks like a nice frame. It weighs around 111 grams, so it is a freestyle build. Um, it's The carbon looks good. I mean, it's something different. Um, I probably will be building this, actually. Maybe stick a Star F4S in here, and then just a VTX receiver camera, you're done. So this one is pretty nice build. You don't expect to go grab the, like, the Emacs Magnum and expect it to fit in here, because... That won't fit. I can tell you that right now. You need some type of 4 in 1 ESC, then you would want one with kind of like a PDB to power up your flight controller. Or I would highly recommend something like an all in one flight controller and a 4 in 1 ESC, then you should be good to go. Stick the VTX up here. You have a lot of holes and the receiver, you know, anywhere you could go anywhere. The receiver, you could put it on the bottom, put the VTX up top, and you're good to go. Overall, it's it's really nice frame. Now, I don't know if it's a clone of something. If it's a clone of something, please let me know down in the comment section. Now, I have no idea. And um, it just seems like it's kind of um, inspired by the uh, stingy frame, how this is sticking out here. But, you know, there was other frames that had this too, so uh, you can't really say much. But if this is a clone of something, which I highly doubt, but I'm not sure, please let us know down in the comment section. And uh, overall, this thing's around 30 bucks, so it's fairly priced in my opinion. Uh, it's very good for the amount of things. Everything is two millimeters, so uh, it's pretty good. And on the arms, I liked something that you're not gonna be able to see here, actually. On the arms here, where the screw comes in, it's not all the See, as you can tell, it would be all the way on the edge, but they actually have extra carbon to go around it like this. So you don't risk, you know, breaking arms super easy. So they're really not trying to go cheap on you. The only part where they went cheap on us is with the hardware. And the hardware is very important. So I highly recommend you use your own hardware with this, to be honest. these It doesn't matter the top plate, bottom plate, the standoffs. Just the ones that are holding the arms in place. That is the most important part. And like I mentioned, longer screws for your camera because you will need those. I guarantee you will need those. So get those beforehand or right when you order it, get your screws. Try to figure out what screws to get here. And overall, it's... Uh, you know, pretty nice quadcopter. It's a little nice frame. Uh, it is a nice little freestyle frame. So I will be building this very soon on the channel. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know what parts I'll put on it, but it should be pretty fun, pretty interesting. And that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please don't forget to join the mission, join my Patreon, help me document everything. Also, you could also use little affiliate links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.